Ah, sí. Hello, hello, back again. Today we talk about size matters, type matters, budget matters. Actually, matters everything. Come in and uh, you tell me what you're searching for. Come on. So it's it's all a question. What kind of instrument you're l searching for? The first question actually is what's your budget? I know it's not very romantic and rough in a way, but there is a very 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 famous shop in London, for instance, where people come in. Hello, hello. How, what's your budget? Instead of. Uh, wishing them a good day or something. What's your budget? And then they go or oh, here or oh, there. And it's actually, it's very cruel. The section we are working in is a specific section in violin making. And this is something you have to sort out. Where do you come from? Are you a beginner? Can you afford something better? Or do you want something already for their studies, a higher level, or you are a professional. After you got that question, we go and we search. And we both don't waste too much time. Here we have actually the entrance. We have a double bass, the viola here, and the violins in general over there. Yep. On the viola size matters. Most of the viola player play viola because they have a very big hand. Even me, myself, I entered into the violin making and into the music making because somebody discovered that I have very big hands. Now on viola there are many measurements. Years ago, about 20, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, there was a big trend that everybody wanted huge viola like this one, 43.5 string legs like a 42. Very great sounding. I think there is no better sounding viola than this one, but it's really low, okay? So before you get something like this, you have to know if you want to be outstanding viola player, the best sound in viola playing, and you can afford to have such a huge instrument. If you want like, this one is a 39 centimeter, I call it turbo, a small model, tiny, and comes out surprisingly a lot of sound. Generally speaking, as long as you can make it with a 41, 41.5 centimeter viola, this is the ideal measurement for a viola. Around that measurement, there are some compromises to make. I show you how it works with the cellos and the violins, come on. So, the first impression if somebody comes in, uh, too many instruments and they don't know where to start. Don't play them all. Restrict it on what you're searching for. That makes your decision definitely easier. The ear is extremely sophisticated. The elaboration of what we hear in our brain is even more sophisticated than you would expect yourself, okay? You hear maybe even better than me, but if you have many instruments, you choose out one, very likely you won't choose the best. Take a little, tiny step back and focus on what you want. Tell them what you want and the maker will pull out one, two, three, four instruments. That would be the ideal situation. Better served than if you would play everything, okay? I tell that because probably you have made the same experience that you go back to your orchestra, everybody's talking about that this guy finally bought a violin. Usually these fellows, everybody knows they search an instrument. And then when they finally buy an instrument, which they buy expensive, they are happy that they bought it because then now they can finally show it to everybody. And then everybody's really curious to listen to this instrument. Finally, what did he buy now? and then it's a lemon, you know, and it sounds even awful. And that happens because when you have many instruments of a very high level, you probably risk to pick out the one which is not the best, but the one which is different. Different is not a better. It could be, but it doesn't mean that it's better. Try to limit a little bit, don't over try two, three, four. In case you see that that section is not what you expect, maybe re-talk with the maker and with the shop owner and then maybe they find another one, but then try to stop it and they say maybe I come back maybe tomorrow, okay? And tomorrow you start with a fresh, cleaned ear 
with a little bit of distance try to get a little bit of distance and then check it out okay that's advice for viola violin cello double bass always the same because you have to evaluate another thing we're all forced nowadays on a specific measurement full size is here the main measurement on violins especially or on cellos here all full size except one a seven eight if your fingers don't match it don't make a pain out of it it should be a pleasure right it should be something the instrument should be take part of your person of your body to express with the tone which comes out what you feel okay now ooh, edgar tells you most cello players should actually play a 7 8 and sound wise you wouldn't even say that this is a 7 8 just my friend here Jonathan Humphrey is a cello teacher here online changed his full size cello to a 7 8 and he's super happy with this 7 8 has also some students who play on 7 8 I have right now even a Scala Perfetta 7 8 even so even from the lowest grade I have already something and if your budget is higher Linia Maki uh, Marco, Min, or me, I can make it for you and you can compete with a 7-8 perfectly with a full-size cello and nobody would even think that this is a smaller size cello. Even by looking here on my cellos here, you don't even see it on a cello, but especially on double bass, it's important that it's your size. And then it's a matter of human beings that certainly you would say only tall people play double bass. It's like, you know, when you see a couple, one very tall like Christian and uh, the wife very small, attracted by the opposite, that's okay. So very often you see double bass players who are rather small, they need a chair, and then they put the double bass and play a huge 110 centimeter string length so that doesn't really mean and it's okay it's okay but still your specifications for the idle instrument is slightly different so keep that in mind and on violins let's say you're now a complete beginner and you're a small child or you're the parent and you're searching the right instrument for your uh, child we had here some customers from uh, california they choose very very long they were picking out they found me somehow on the internet and then they were looking for the right instrument. First, a three-quarter instrument. I think it was a, a Linea Maki. And uh, from the Linea Maki, then they graded up to the full size. Everybody goes through if you start uh, playing the instrument with a, uh, as a child. And here, I just wanted to point out whatever you buy, what price range you buy, at least in my workshop, when you grade up from, uh, let's say, half to a three-quarter, three-quarter, seven-eighth, seven-eighth, full-size, or if you're three-quarter and full-size, I always take it back, taking off the consumption tax and the shipping and the uh, costs and things like this, and you just pay the difference for the bigger instrument. It's a little bit of fuss with the re-importing and all this crap, but it's possible and it's we do that on a very regular base and people are very happy okay when you choose the right instrument the right measurement it's it's not now a purchase which is like buying a car and then it's oh it's at the value is down the nice thing in violin making is that the instrument maintains its value especially a violin making like my workshop where instruments are like scala perfetta definitely still affordable so your huge important decision you want to do everything right in this moment take it a little bit easier it's just a decision for a certain period of time and that probably you later on you will grade up so whatever you buy at least in my workshop from Scala Perfetta or to up to my master instruments is well spent money because it doesn't go down after a few years with the invoice you get back exactly the same amount you paid except the shipping packaging and tax and you just pay the difference for the next instrument you buy hmm? so I think this is already pretty good and these customers from California, they are super, super happy. They didn't expect such high quality when they got there. I think it's a Guarnieri model and they are so happy. And this is certainly out there. I have now more customers, right? And then I have customers here 
customer there. In Slovenia, in Austria, in Germany, in the rest of America, Australia. It's like, you know, it's spreading out all over and people get to know it and that's how I make my living. So to conclude it and make it easier for you, write me an email, budget, type of instrument, violin, viola, cello, double bass, and your, a little bit your sound, imagination, what you would like, how it should sound, how it should respond, how easy it should be, what kind of performance you are playing, and then I will propose you a few things. And this makes things for you much easier. I hope you enjoyed this video, you learned a little bit more, it gets a little bit more focus on what you actually are looking here. If you're happy with your instrument, if you want to change, I'm always here. Write me some messages or some comments or email or WhatsApp or whatever or Instagram. I, now I start to look even at my Instagram messages more and more frequently. There's coming so many comments in and that's it. And if you are uh, interested in violin making, then you shouldn't leave. Then you have to sign up to my violin making academy. And if this is far too much for your expense, then start with the Patreon where you can learn a lot. Yeah. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye bye. Sei molto carino. Oltre che c'è un gatto qua. Oh, signor. Dai, Isotta. Isotta non ha visto il gatto.